What's up guys? David Nader 1212 and it's List Day. Ah yes, List Day. This is the millionth time I've recorded this intro. I, I keep getting tongue tied. I don't know why. So I think for the rest of the video, if I'm just mumbling and incoherent, I'm just going to use it. <laughs> and today we're going to be looking at the top 10 most represented type combos in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! When I say type combo, I am talking about a monster's attribute and typing. For instance, the blue eyes white dragon is a light dragon monster. You guys have no idea how many times I've done this. And like last time, we are going to be using Ryan's spreadsheet where he took every single monster in the game, OCG and TCG, sorted them by attribute and then by type, and then just wrote down the number of how many monsters are that thing. Unlike the last list, where every entry only had one or two cards to talk about, this list has hundreds per entry. Because there is 10,000 cards in this game. Holy poop. So instead of having a video that's a year long, I had my Discord pick an archetype that best represents this typing combo. Basic rules were it needed to be mostly monsters that are this typing, and also it had to be kind of good. So without further ado, let's get started. I haven't gotten this far yet, holy crap. Number 10, Earth Rock. <laughs> holy sh Dave, that has got to be the most revolutionary thing ever said in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. A common typing in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh is Earth Rock. What other attribute would a rock monster be? No, no. He's got a point. There's 197 Earth Rock monsters, which make up 82% of all rock monsters. So apparently, I am correct. What other attribute would they be? <laughs> so what archetype would we use to represent our Rocky boys? Rock is a lot like Dinosaur, where a lot of the good support is for rock monsters, not for a specific archetype. So a good rock deck, hard air quotes, tends to be like just a bunch of random rock monsters stuck together, not a real specific archetype. But you had to pick one, it would definitely be Mega. Megaliths. But Dave, rituals suck! Oh yeah, they do. However, Megaliths did see some competitive success getting to the uh, finals of a LCS. What the hell is that? But the reason why Megaliths are actually okay, despite the fact that they are a bunch of blue monsters, is because uh, they don't actually really need a ritual spell. They can special summon themselves with the other monsters, which does actually fix the entire inherent problem of ritual monsters. It's really sad what rituals have to do in order to be good. They gotta basically break all the rules. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Ah, best ones on the list, Water Aqua. With 211 monsters making up a whopping 88% of all aqua monsters, Water Aquas is my favorite. And what, what archetype could we use to represent the Water Aqua monsters? <laughs> it's your boy, <laughs> Tom! Frogs are real good. You probably could also use Paleozoics for this representation. Those two archetypes tend to go hand in hand, so it doesn't really matter which one you pick. However, I decided on frogs because Paleozoics are mostly trap cards. The monsters they do have are water aquas. There's just not very many of them. And the traps do turn into water aquas, but they don't count towards the entire monster total because we can't count trap monsters because that doesn't make any sense because then we'd have to count token monsters and monsters that make tokens and then other weird... No. So we're going to use frogs. It's not perfect because you don't play most of the frogs. <laughs> I think you play more of the Paleozoics than you do the frogs. But Swap Frog, Dupe Frog, and Ronin Toten are really, really good. They are an engine unto themselves and Totally Awesome is probably one of the best XE monsters in the game and certainly the best rank too. So, you know what? It's good enough for me because it's an excuse to talk about my froggy, froggy boys. It's my favorite deck. Every time I go to build a new deck, I'm like, I could just be playing frogs. Why am I doing this? Number eight, Dark Machine. That's the name of my band. I play the triangle. Dark Machine has 221 monsters, making up 25% of all machine monsters, which is uh, a lot less than the 80s we've seen previously, but there's also an ass load of machine monsters. And anyone who plays machines know they're kind of broken up into like three three attributes. So 25% ain't that bad. Actually, it's about right. Three attributes, then like one category for just miscellaneous crap. Yeah, 25%. And uh, what archetype could we possibly use for, uh, for dark machines? Uh, let's use Orcist. So good and consistent, you could basically open two effect monsters and you had full Orcist combo. They they were so good, they called it full Orcist combo. Could I, Davinator1212, explain to you the full Orcist combo? <laughs> Absolutely not. But Dave, you have a Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube channel! <laughs> 
It does have something to do with harp horror. That's that's true. And uh, I don't know who I'm kidding. I, I would be saxophone pass if I if I if I was given the cards. John Williams deck, everybody. Number seven, Light Warrior, with 235 monsters, making up 24% of all warriors. And you know what? Uh, for this one, let's use Satellar Knights. I actually know how to play this one. <laughs> Trevor go burr. They're a little bit linear, but they're a pretty solid rank four engine, and one of the few decks that can actually put out a bunch of monsters in order to reliably raw dog make Ranga Minian. Remember when they could do that? That was crazy. Raw daddy. That was before that bamboozling crap. They could just do it. Not only all that fun, but Satellers also have that stupid band exceed to let you go into, like, infinity, even if you were, like, playing a rank 4 deck. And now these things are in Duel Links, so you can, you can, uh, you can make Deneb pass, I guess. We need Trevor. Is Trevor too broken for Duel Links? I don't know. Number six, Dark Dragon. The only surprise here is one might have thought this would have been higher. Uh, 258 monsters, making up 39% of all dragons. Wow, there's a lot more warriors, isn't there? Dark Dragon. What deck could we use for Dark Dra How about the Dark Dragon combo deck? Rockets. We'll use Rockets. Morals work too, it's the same deck. Eh. <laughs> Again, I have no idea how to play it. <laughs> the next couple of videos I gotta do are like the best and worst cards of this year. I gotta get caught up on how any of this works. Oh, uh, I don't wanna. If we were simply speaking on the power ceiling of all these type combos, I think Dark Dragon would end up being a lot higher uh, if we weren't just going by raw numbers of monsters that are it. Because you got Dragon support and Dark support, those two things are both very well supported and also very good. So it's no wonder that this deck is actually strong. Keep them dark times rolling with Dark Spellcaster. With 283 monsters, making up a pretty solid showing of 43% of all spellcasters, again, the only thing surprising is you'd think it'd be higher. Some of the most iconic monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh are dark spellcasters, like the Dark Magician. If you needed to pick an archetype to represent it well enough, I guess you could pick Pendulum Magicians? Yes, they have monsters of all different attributes, but the dark ones are the good ones. <laughs> Those are the only ones you care about. And I think they're more dark than anything else if you had to pick a good archetype. But if you're gonna be a stickler for the rules, then I guess the Dark Magician deck is, is well, it's not great. It is certainly a dark spellcaster deck, um, com completely literally. Plus, with Dark Magician, if your opponent doesn't have any monsters, you can special summon it and attack for game. GG. Ah, you got me. Hold oh, the master. <laughs> All right, here we go. Earth Machine is number four with 296 monsters. Damn. Making up 34% of all machines. Okay. Now machines are less susceptible to the what else would they be, unlike the rock monsters. But uh, if you make a machine monster, it's probably getting stick into one of three attributes. And uh, Earth Machine, yeah, that's that's a well-represented one. And if we had to pick an archetype in order to use it, I guess you could pick Machina. Earth Machine's a weird one though, because a lot like dinosaurs, you tend to just play an Earth Machine deck. Machinas are one of the better engines you can stick in said Earth Machine deck, so we're gonna go with that. I guess we could mention trains, but I'm not positive those are actually an archetype by like the literal definition of the word. But I guess it's a consideration, right? Cause, cause you know, choo-choo. Choo-choo train rolling up the choo-choo lane. But I like Machina for this because Machina Fortress, despite being an older boss monster for the deck is still Stupid. A monster that can discard itself for its own activation condition is dumb. That is stupid card design and is so broken. <laughs> it's just mind boggling. A card would never do that in, in like modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Absolutely not. Number three. All right, guys, so you got to sit down for this one. This one might might shock you to your core. Light Fairy. With 310 monsters, that is 66% of all fairy monsters. 66%, wow. I mean, yeah, fairies tend to be light attribute. And that is because I think fairy is a, a stand-in for like the, the heaven or angel typing. So anytime we get a monster that's like some sort of ethereal force of some kind, they just stick it in fairy because it's it's the only thing that really makes any sense. You smell that? It smells like like a f and weeb. And if we had to pick an archetype for this, I don't know, Trickstar? Trickstar is an interesting deck because it's kind of versatile in the strategy in which you can use it in. It's a little bit spammy, it's a little bit linky, it's a little bit burny, like my butt after Thai food. Ah! 
and it's probably the most recently competitively successful light fairy deck there is. Uh, I guess agents could also be uh, a solid contender. Uh, they're a little older though, so I guess we'll go with Trickstar. I like that stupid Dark Room of Nightmare build of Trickstars where you like do one thing and then like a bunch of crap goes off. You burn your opponent like a million times for like 200 damage. <laughs> That's stupid. All right, and by this point in the video, you're probably trying to guess what number one is. Because if you've been playing the game long enough, there's probably one of two options you could have guessed since the beginning what it might be if you didn't know what the numbers were. Number two is Earth Warrior. So uh, that probably telegraphs what number one is. With 351 monsters total, making up 35% of all warriors, which, uh, wow, that's the highest number of cards, like draw cards we've seen so far, and it's one of the lower percentages. <laughs> there is a lot of warrior monsters, holy crap. Uh, let's go with, uh, let's go with Goki. Goki Shoki is really brokey. That's terrible. Despite being one of the earliest Link Spam decks we have, the Goki strategy has a lot of evergreen quality to it simply because when a monster goes to the graveyard to get a new one out of your deck, that's good resource management. Because what happens when you go into your extra deck? A lot of times it takes at least two monsters to make one monster in your extra deck. That is a neg one play in card advantage. So every time you make an extra deck play, you are losing the amount of cards you control. Eventually, you'll be out of stuff. But Goki's mitigate that problem by getting you extra resources. I need more men. Hashtag send dudes. It's also probably doing them a bit of a disservice, not to mention the fact that just by simply being warrior is a boon to an archetype because it opens you not up to just a bunch of your own good targeted support, but also generic warrior support, i.e. Uh, reinforcements to the army and that things like that. It, it, it It's just good being a warrior, you know what I mean? Goki, come out in combo. Unlike the last list, we actually have some honorable mentions, simply because uh, the way the numbers shook out last time, uh, we couldn't do a, a number 11, because number 11 was literally less than 10 was. But uh, this time around, we have a three-way tie for 10, so we can actually have some, some, some honorable mentions. Our first honorable mention is Dark Warrior. With 197 monsters making up 20% of all warrior monsters, Dark Warrior is not only one of the most represented types in the game, it's also one of the better ones. <laughs> There's literally a deck called Dark Warrior because of it. And that's because we got things like Armageddon Knight and Dark Rapper. <laughs> if we had to pick an archetype though, uh, I don't know, Phantom Knights? Phantom Knights is a great engine, and it single-handedly told Fiendish Chain to sit the f down. And then one close to my heart, Earth Beast. With again, 197 monsters making up 56% of all beast monsters, Earth Beast is a very well represented type combo. Because yeah, considering how many attributes there are, 56% being the same one is really big. There's just not that many beast monsters. And again, this is one of those monster mash decks, so I guess we're gonna go with the Melfies. Oh, they're so cute. And Melfies are actually a pretty solid engine for like the rank two beast deck, especially because their XC monsters can all just kind of attack no fear into an opponent's board, which means in your main phase two, which really brings up the, the visualization of a tiny rabbit uh, transforming into a giant Decepticon. <laughs> Goofy deck. And our third honorable mention, TCG player, aha! We got YCS Pasadena coming up and unless Omicron uh, activates its trap card. So you might need, uh, you might need real cards. Uh, I definitely need to start reading real cards to see what real cards I need to then purchase <laughs> so I can get back into this game. So TCG player is a great, a great thing for that. All right, number one, the uh, the the world-ending shocker that will make you all crap yourselves. Your pants shall be filled at the surprise that number one is Dark Fiend. <laughs> I'm honestly not surprised. Again, what else would a fiend be? It's literally like the demon type, so dark. With 543 monsters, holy crap, making up a whopping 74% of all fiend monsters, that's a lot of dark fiends. Feral and support win! <laughs> All right, so we had to pick an archetype to accurately represent uh, the Dark Fiends. What would we pick? Burning Abyss. Burning Abyss is an easy choice for Dark Fiend because I think Burning Abyss still might, mechanically speaking, be the best deck ever created. Whenever one of your main deck monsters can special summon itself or also do something else, and they're all the same level, same type, same attribute, holy crap, that opens up a lot of consistency, a lot of recovery. The deck just kind of works. The only thing it really 
suffers from is what you can go into in your extra deck. A lot of things like Dante nowadays are a little bit of been power creeped, so it's not like it's super competitive, but the main deck itself is still super solid. Throw some Phantom Knights in there, you could you could recreate PK Fire. I don't know, be an edge lord at your at your locals or whatever. Because hey, you know what? This deck still it it just works. All of this just works. It's not, I'm not kidding. We've had a lot more decks that have a lot of higher consistency and a lot of higher power ceiling, but nothing, nothing's quite as tight, you know what I mean? It just it feels good. It feels good to play Burning Abyss. It's all just bah, 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 bah. Which is also probably why we haven't had a really, really solid TCG exclusive archetype since. <laughs> because his Drome, he blew his load on that one and, and now everything else is janky and strange and, and the OCG needs to fix it to make it good. <laughs> Damn it, Jerome. All right, guys, that was a list. I hope you enjoyed it. I, f I think the most interesting thing about this one was the order, because, like, if you think about it, like, yeah, Dark Dragons, Dark Warriors, Earth Warriors, Earth Rock, yeah, like, all that stuff makes total sense to be on the list. Just where it is, oh, it's kind of interesting. I truly didn't realize we had so many fiends. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, guys, join us next time. I think we're going to start looking at the best and worst cards of the year. So I got to get, I got to get my schooling. So anyway, guys, remember, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. You are now under the control of my Millennia Rod. You will subscribe to the channel or watch the latest vid. And if not, you could, you could watch whatever the f*** this is.